This week we travel to the landlocked country of Rwanda as we take a closer look at the opportunities and challenges that continue to plague this East African nation as it tries to rebuild its image with the global economy. Situated in central eastern Africa and spanning just over 26,000 square kilometers, Rwanda is one of the continent's fastest growing economies as it continues its road to recovery from the civil war and scourge of genocide in the mid-1990s. In spite of global uncertainties, Rwanda's GDP gained 8.8% in 2011 from 7.6% in 2010. This was mainly due to improved harvest, rising exports and increased credit extensions to the private sector. This, however, is expected to drop back slightly to 7.6% in 2012 due to fiscal consolidations. Rwanda exports some of its food harvests in the East African community, but the high cost of trade needs to be urgently addressed. A recent study revealed that the cost of exporting from the country is at times threefold more than in other regional economies. To transport a container of goods from a port, a Kenyan exporter would pay roughly 2,000 US dollars, a Ugandan exporter close to 2,900 US dollars, a Burundian and a Tanzanian would pay 2,965 and 1,300 US dollars respectively, while an exporter from Rwanda would pay a little over 3,300 US dollars. According to the study, local import costs to Rwanda are also higher due to the country's geographical location. High costs of trade, among other issues, may be partly responsible for the country's trade deficit. But despite these challenges, Rwanda is eager to overcome the limitations of its small landlocked economy by leveraging regional trade through the EAC, aligning its budget and formulating policies that enhance its business environment. And now joining me in studio to take a closer look at Rwanda as an investment destination is Paul Runga. He's the Managing Director, Africa Project Access, Sophia Patel, Partner, M&A Practice, Weber Wenzel. And joining us from our bureau in Nairobi is Ali Khan Sachu, CEO of Rich Management. Thank you all so much for joining me. Let's look at Rwanda, obviously they're in focus in terms of our journalist having accumulated some information. Is it on your radar screen at the moment, Sophia? Um, it certainly is on, on, on my radar screen, but um, more interestingly, um, it's on our client's radar screen. Um, um, there's a keen interest in Africa generally, but Rwanda has been um, focused uh, by many of our clients looking at investing in, in Africa. As we said earlier, Ali Khan recently celebrated as the third African country in terms of ease of doing business. It's ranked number three when it comes to the African continent. What examples could we take from what Rwanda has done right and deploy those into other territories on the African continent? Um, I think the first thing that Rwanda's done is it's run its economy on an empirical basis. And you can see that in the ease of doing business indices where it just shot up the rankings it takes about 48 hours to open a business in Kigali compared to over a month in Nairobi. And I think President Kagame has embraced a, a very scientific approach to running his government, very output driven, very measured, and, and had tremendous success with it. I mean, people do tend to forget that the genocide only happened 18 years ago. So I think they've come an incredibly long way. Your, your piece, your package was talking about it being landlocked, the challenges about shipping containers into Kigali. They've got plenty of challenges, but I think they've really been able to surmount them by having a single vision and a very clear concept of what defines the national interest. And that lack of definition, I think, is missing in many other African countries to their detriment. Looking, Paul, at the annual growth rate, that's 7 to almost 8%, is it really sustainable? Because this could be the most exciting story on the African continent. Yes, it, uh, I, I'm very optimistic on, on Rwanda because uh, what I do for my clients is I run around chasing projects and trying to identify greenfields and brownfields projects. And there is such a pipeline of projects in Rwanda that 
yes, on the project's level for sure it's, it's going to be sustained. And also with your, your lead up piece as well, there was a lot of reference to the difficulties in logistics. And that is a very big issue, but bear in mind that with Rwanda and Burundi now joining the East African community and the Isaka Kigali line coming about, and there's a lot of collaboration within the East African region. Absolutely, they now have it. direct access to the port Mombasa I, I, in Kenya. And the central corridor through to Dar, when that Dar uh, Kigali, Saka Kigali um, line is, is done, it's a major undertaking, rail line, um, but that it's going to free itself up and it's fast tracking itself uh, through, through applications of ICT uh, very, very much. ICT, I think the, the government is relying a lot on that. There's 2,500 Case of, of fiber optic cable being laid, and it's uh, it's it's just a point of third mobile operator. So it is it is uh, really really um, using it in services, not just products, in services too, like education, health. Uh, in fact, looking at the, just preparing for this and looking at the different sectors, it's amazing the range of sectors uh, in, which are covered by these these upcoming greenfields, brownfields projects. Talking about sectors, Sophia, which do you deem to be the hot spots in terms of sectors within the Rwandan economy? Um, uh I, I do agree with, uh, with Paul that um, ICT is, uh, appears to be a hot spot um, and we've got particular interest, uh, particularly from Indian markets in relation to ICT and other services sectors like health. Um, and I think those are particular hot spots. And I think that's where the strength of the growth in the economy in Rwanda probably lies. Ali Khan, a moment ago, Paul mentioned the East African community. Do you think that we can attribute much of Rwanda's success to the fact that the East African community is working so well? Well, I, I think the East African community is working well. It's the second fastest uh, region, fastest growing region in the world after ASEAN. Um, there is plenty of momentum. I think we're starting from a very low base. So I'd, I'd encourage your viewers to think that this is just the starting point. It's nowhere it's not a mature move at all. It's a very immature move, and I think there's plenty to play for. I think Rwanda you know, doesn't have the natural resources some of its neighbors have, and I think that's focused their mind more on human capital, in, in creating an environment where people will find it attractive to come with their talents and uh, set up base. And I think those are, are the prime movers behind the Rwandan story. And I, would, I don't underestimate the power of pull. I think President Kagame has an outside share of voice, and part of his, his share of voice is bringing traction to the, these areas like ICT, Carnegie Mellon is setting up shop in Kigali, which in itself speaks to the power of pull in Rwanda. In terms of South African corporates now migrating to the Rwanda space, are there well-known names, well-known brands that are, are going into Rwanda as an entry point? It is still um, a problem in that regard because I don't believe that the profile is of the South Africans present there is, is what it should be. Um, you know, a, a very important factor that South Africans should bear in mind is that Rwanda is now an officially a bilingual country. It, it is not just a francophone country, and that's often been a barrier. In practical terms, as I deal you know, with business development managers and export managers all the time, um, I, I often find this a barrier. They immediately assume, well, the systems are going to be different apart from the language. And, uh, and I went into the, in, uh, the investment promotion center in Kigali not so long ago, and I, I speak good French, so I addressed them in French. And immediately the lady answered me and said, excuse me, sir, but I don't speak uh, French, I speak English. And, um, and uh, you know, so there you go. There's, a, there's an anecdotal evidence of, of what I'm talking about. In terms of the challenges yeah. still facing Rwanda, there are still many. What would you say is the biggest one, Sophia? Um, I, I think um, the, the, probably the biggest problem um, was identified in your piece, and that in, is in relation to export costs. Um, I think that's probably the, the biggest challenges. Uh, I'm very pleased about the, the policy reforms that we've seen since 2001. That's been extremely encouraging. Um, and in fact, um, that has motivated many foreign investors to look at the country as, a, as, a foreign, as an investment destination. Well, let's go back to that third easiest place to do business on the African continent. And Ali Khan, I'm coming back to you. How have they managed to eliminate corruption? Or is there still a little smidgen of corruption in the system? That, that's a very interesting question. And let me answer it like this. I think you'll never find corruption on an individual basis in the manner you'd find in other parts of East Africa. 
you know, the Kitu, Kitu Kudogo culture, which is just give me something to make this thing happen. And uh, you find that in everyday life uh, in other parts of East Africa, um, whereas you will not find that in Rwanda. However, I think, you know, the Rwandan government has essentially created a vehicle which is a party vehicle, which is an investor in many parts of the economy. And I would not define that as corrupt, but I would say that's the system that they've utilized. I think it's quite similar to what the Singaporeans did. You know, you create a very strong institution which is able to, uh, to tilt the pitch a little bit in its favor. But I think, you know, it is extremely clean. My personal impression, I was there uh, 11 months ago. You know, it's a joy to operate there. If you've got an issue, you, you, people will hold their meetings on time. They'll facilitate you. And their success is bound up in yours because they are a small country and they want to be successful. And they can't afford, you know, anyone to go back and say, we were not helpful, you can't do business there. They have a real can-do attitude which some of the bigger boys around our continent really don't have. Well, we've got Sophia and Paul both nodding furiously in studio to your comments there. Sophia, you want to add? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to say about the issue of corruption. I mean, that's uh, what, what is really encouraging about uh, the president is, although he's a controversial figure, he's asserted the rule of law in relation to corruption, and he's asserted it quite aggressively. Uh, I mean, to the point where ministers have been locked up. Uh, for corrupt, but that's exactly what you want to see. People absolutely. really taking it seriously mm -hmm. and taking the necessary action absolutely. when people are found guilty of corruption. Mm -hmm. isn't absolutely, it? Mm -hmm. absolutely. And Paul, uh, further to your comments on this. Yes, I just uh, would like to just put in uh, a couple of other elements here because I, I agree 100. percent It's a very comfortable place to do business, um, and, and and the institutions are very helpful. Uh, certainly the investment promotion centre are very efficient. But remember that, uh, remember its geographic position. It's actually sitting in a very, very difficult part of Africa. Mm. You know, we've got the Eastern DRC there and that's never really uh, calmed down. So there are wheels within wheels there and um, I think a massive return of, of refugees from, uh, from, from the Eastern Congo in, in great numbers would upset things somewhat. Uh, I think that Paul Kagame is a very astute politician and he has to play that, but he's sitting on a, next to a cauldron, and uh, it's, it's not all easy. So I think it has to be very strongly controlled. We're going to a quick commercial break. More on Rwanda as a business and investment destination when we return. Stay tuned.